Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports Bike Shop's review of the Revit Outback 4 H2O textile jacket. Versatility has always been the key to Revit's Outback jacket series and this fourth generation of jacket carries that on very, very well in my opinion. The Outback 4 H2O is a three-in-one textile jacket with removable waterproof and thermal layers, so it can be tailored to suit a wide range of conditions from cold and wet to hot and dry. It costs £299.99 as we record this, and in my opinion, the quality of construction is better than that price suggests. I've worn this one for around 250 miles, so I can give you a rundown of the key info and also my experience with it out on the road. The outer for this jacket is mainly 600 denier polyester, and then there's some tougher ripstop fabric covering the shoulders and the outside of the arms. If you look closely at ripstop, you'll see a crisscross pattern threaded through it that's designed to stop small tears from growing into big tears. The jacket does up with a chunky zip up the front, and then there's a gutted storm flap that secures over the top with Velcro to stop rain reaching the zip. At the collar, there's an adjustable snap system that's common on quite a few Revit jackets. This gives five stages of adjustment to give you a choice of snug or relaxed fit. And if you want it out of the way completely, the closure will also snap back to the other side of the collar to give you room around the throat. The collar's lined with a corduroy material and then there's a roll of neoprene around the top as well. The cuffs fasten with a combination of zips, press stud and then a Velcro strap and that zip is a two-way type so you can pull it down to reveal an air vent. I found there was enough room here for winter gloves to go inside the cuff and if I tighten the Velcro strap then I could comfortably get the same gloves over the top of the jacket. There's fit adjustment through poppers at the biceps, belts at the waist and there's also a pull cord at the bottom hem and all of those tighten the jacket up so that it's more comfortable when you're wearing it without the liners in place. Ventilation comes mostly from these fold back panels at the chest. If you undo the zip, fold back the panel and secure it with the press stud then you get a decent opening here for airflow. As well as these and those zip vents at the cuffs, there's also a vent across the shoulder blades as well. Now the fact the waterproof membrane and the thermal liner can be stripped out of this jacket makes the ventilation all the more effective as there are no real barriers to airflow. I wore this jacket in some pretty warm conditions and I found the ventilation to be effective at allowing air to flow and make my ride more comfortable. So finally with the outside, let's talk about pockets. There's the stash pocket at the lower back that you see on a lot of jackets like this, and then you've got five pockets on the front. The top loading pockets here secure down with press studs, and then there are slash cut hand warmer pockets over the top. These don't secure down at all, so I wouldn't store anything in there unless you're willing to risk it falling out and disappearing forever. The sixth external pocket is this zipped pocket here just to the left of the main zip. None of these pockets are described by Revit as waterproof and I wouldn't personally trust them with anything that might get damaged if it got wet. So let's move to the inside. The layer nearest the skin is the thermal lining. There's one pocket in there and then that attaches into the waterproof lining with press studs at the neck, the cuffs and also down the main opening. So behind that you get the waterproof layer which we've just discussed. It's made from Revit's Hydrotex light membrane. It's breathable and it's also got tape seams to keep out the rain. It's been designed so it can be worn as a standalone jacket without looking odd and you can also attach the thermal liner inside there to make that just a little bit warmer for chilly days. This liner, the waterproof liner, fastens with a zip of its own and then there's a gutted storm flap behind that zip to catch any rain that creeps through the teeth and then that gutter channels it towards the bottom of the jacket. There's a pocket inside the waterproof liner and this is the only pocket in the whole jacket that Revit described as being waterproof. With the waterproof lining taken out, you can see the mesh liner that holds the armour and that also has two small Velcro pockets in it. And when the jacket's like this, you can also see the Napoleon pockets. It's just behind the main zip and it's easy to get to regardless of which liners you have or don't have fitted inside at the time. The armour that's included with this jacket comes at the shoulders and elbows. It's Revit C-Smart armour that's well vented for airflow and meets the higher level 2 of the CE impact protection standard. It's also marked as Type B armour, which is a good thing as it covers more of your body than a basic Type A insert. The armour has also passed two optional tests that show it meets the same standard when tested at high and low temperatures. There are pockets for chest and back protectors, but these are optional extras you have to buy separately if you want them. As we record this, it's £45 for the back insert and it's £30 for a pair of chest protectors. The label inside the jacket shows the overall CE rating for the Outback 4, which passes at the middle of the three levels, which is AA. The base of the jacket's interior is made from ripstop, which gives that a robust feel, and here it's where we find the short connection zip to attach to Revit's trousers. 
There's also an identical zip on the bottom of the waterproof lining. Zipping that to the trousers reduces the chance of a gap opening in the waterproofing, so it helps keep rain out. This jacket will attach to all Revit trousers through that zip, it's universal, but if you want the matching ones then there are Outback 4 H2O trousers which cost £239.99 as we record this. The jacket comes in sizes small to 4XL which translates to a range from 40 inch to 52 inch chest and the trousers are available in waist sizes from 28 up to 44 inches with three leg lengths available in all sizes. If you go for the jacket and the trousers then this combination comes in at £540 minus two pence. That, I think, is pretty damn reasonable for something that covers such a wide range of weather conditions. Now, at the moment, laminated kit seems to be very, very popular, but that's really best for people who know they're going to be riding in the rain a lot. If you mostly avoid riding in the wet, who can blame you? And also, if you want your kit to suit riding on hot days, then having a removable waterproof membrane like this jacket has, then I think is the way to go. It will cover you for the wet when you need it. It can be stripped out on hot days, and overall, it's probably the most versatile type of bike clothing you can get. I've just done a 1400 mile trip where the weather forecast said everything was going to be mostly okay but there were going to be some showers and also some red hot days. I took a jacket very much like this one with a removable membrane and if I did the trip again I'd happily take a Revit Outback 4 with me. In my time wearing it I found it protected me against rain, it was comfortable when it was hot and the thermal liner also suits chilly days. For day after day of rain or for year round commuting I would probably go for laminate but otherwise I think I'd stick with something like this. I hope that tells you everything you wanted to know about the Revit Outback 4 H2O jacket, but if there is anything you'd like to ask or to add, then please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching.